Guys, welcome back. It's Daryl Aviator 267 with you to introduce the latest video in our series. The series is going to be called Black Ops, uh, dedicated to the flight operational uh, aspects of operating the Black Shape Prime. Obviously, with the military theme Black Ops, uh, because the aircraft is styled after military aircraft, basically a PC9, PC21, PC7 platform. With me, Seth. You've seen my Instagram, you've seen him there. He's got his own Instagram page. Hopefully you guys will also check him out there. Seth, welcome on board. Thank you very much. Pleasure to be on your channel. Uh, just a short and quick intro. Uh, as Captain mentioned here, we've been working together for the past uh, two and a half years. Uh, right. yeah, we currently uh, have been in an established airline mm -hmm. and uh, I'm currently operating as a captain. Had the pleasure of flying and uh, undergoing training with the uh, Aviator 267. Yeah and uh, it's been a magnificent experience so far and i was uh, very fascinated and uh, interested about your black ship operation and uh, the introduction of black ship to the african market well, what can you tell us uh, yeah so that's exactly it guys just like Seth, a lot of you guys have got a lot of questions uh, about the black shape and this is what the series is dedicated to uh, but first of all a bit of housekeeping i don't know what you call it uh, public <laughs> yeah. service announcements <laughs> Uh, guys, thanks for the support so far. Uh, it's been amazing. Uh, we appreciate uh, all the subscribers and I always take the time out to like and uh, reply your comments. So thanks very much. But in particular, one specific shout out uh, goes out to uh, a fellow YouTube vlogger uh, by the name of Simulated Flyer. For those of you guys wanting to get into aviation and uh, you can't get out to an airport or you can't get into flight training right now, one good option is getting yourself a flight simulator rig at home, whether it's on your PC, uh, whether you're flying it uh, on whatever platforms you yeah, have. Yeah, usually uh, I've had some experience as well uh, with uh, a few flight simulators uh, like P3D and X-Plane, and I can tell you it's quite helpful. It's very realistic, guys. Uh, I was I was uh, surfing YouTube one night looking for some black shape videos and uh, came across a live streaming of uh, simulated flyers uh, uh, video with a black shape prime I logged on there started yeah. chatting with him said oh wow interesting aircraft and he's like oh Aviator 267 I know you man I've been <laughs> I've been following your channel and uh, last week posted another great video operating the black shape prime in the factory blue and white livery just like our 22 I'll tell you guys simulator flying is realistic that aircraft is operating identically and exactly the same way that we operate 22 uh, so if you're interested in getting into flying and you can't get out to an aircraft or airport uh, consider getting yourself a simulator and following a simulated flyer. All right. Any first, questions? <laughs> yeah, first things first. Uh, what are your thoughts about the Black Shape Prime uh, being utilized as a training aircraft? Yeah, we, uh, it looks intimidating. And that was one of the questions that we received from, from some of the subscribers. You know, their flying club wants to get one. Mm -hmm. What is it like to operate? Uh, how does it perform? Crosswind landings, for example. And obviously somebody who doesn't have a PPL wants to know if they'll ever be yeah. eligible to fly there. Starting from scratch, I imagine. Guys, it's an outer light, 600 kgs all up weight, uh, but it's certified as, or it's classified as an advanced outer light, basically yeah. because it has a retractable gear and a very good pitch. Those are not intimidating aspects of the aircraft, uh, especially if you're still learning to fly initially uh, and you get taught the principles from the proper flight school, the foundations are there, positive rate, Gear up. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Coming on final approach, you put the wheels down, check you have three greens. If you go through that systematic training and it's instilled in you from the beginning, this aircraft is uh, is going to be easy to fly. Yeah. Um, yes, it's um, high performance in the sense of it outperforms any aircraft in its class. We, we get a tires of 140 knots at, at elevation where we are. That's, that's um, very, very impressive. But we yeah. also have a VRF of 55 knots. So you so. can do your approach at 65 knots, cross the fence at 55, and it will stall at 45 knots. Wow. Uh, well, I'm also quite impressed with the avionics and uh, the uh, whole integration. Uh, I believe you use a uh, four flight for your flight uh, management and flight planning. That's right, guys. In no way are we supported or endorsed or receive any sort of uh, financial incentive from four flight. Uh, I, I used four flight about six months ago. Been using it ever since. Some of the features are really great. Give you give you a shout, for example. We know, Seth, we're coming from a multi-crew environment. Uh, when I read the checklist, it's a uh, challenge and response. Challenge check. and response. Uh, so I'll give you yeah. a typical example. We're going for a flight. I, I call up a checklist and I want to use before start checklist. I'm halfway through. Uh, Fuel cell valve, both, set. 
Checked. Battery master on. Voltage checked. 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 Strobe on. Fuel Strobe's pump on. on. Pressure checked. So yeah, this is a new feature uh, that was just introduced a couple of weeks ago from Four Flight. Let's see the voice checklist, the call out checklist. We use it. Uh, to simulate so you integrate it with the operation that's what we're doing when as I'm pilot offering, monitoring and pilot flying as pilot as pilot monitoring uh, if I don't have a pilot monitoring a PM on board and I'm flying single crew I use this as my the pilot automated monitoring. checklist the other added the other features that we had which we did on this flight for example we flew uh, from Pilansburg to Vonderboom um, we were able to go into track logs for example and track our logs uh, Vonderboom Pilansburg to Vonderboom and uh, we could see the actual performance that we did. There we are on a departure. Uh, we're climbing out at 80 knots, passing through 5,500 feet. Yeah. And then you can see we reach our cruise, and uh, we're going at 75% power right now at 142 Around knots. 140, 145 knots. Yeah, 145 yeah. knots. We're averaging 145 knots. It's very accurate. Very accurate. Well, look, if you go into the tables and we uh, we look into the... the um, the uh, the cruise speeds that we can expect on this aircraft, you can see very clearly. You right. should be getting, you know, somewhere in the region of 138 to 140 knots. Uh, that's uh, very accurate. Now that's at all-up weight. Wow. Uh, well, I mean, uh, as a pilot uh, and also as an aviation enthusiast, uh, I'm uh, very, very uh, impressed by the whole uh, structure of the program of the flight training that you want to pursue going forward. As I believe, I mean, it doesn't just equip you with knowledge and the skills to become a pilot, but also gives you the soft skills of managing an automated flight deck. I mean, which yeah. is what the airlines require with the current shortage. I mean, how, how do you think you can address the demand? Well, that's the, the issue, that's the issue, Seth. I mean, look at this right now. You and I in the training environment, we know that there's a global demand and sure, there will be a supply of pilots all the way, but what we're focusing on is the quality of pilots. Exactly. You're gonna, you've been a, an outstanding first officer, you qualified to become a captain. You know what you're looking for from your first officer in terms of performance. Yeah. And myself as a chief pilot responsible for recruiting and training these guys, I also know what I'm looking for. So it's, it's, it's not just good enough to go to a flight school and come out yeah. with, a, with a license in nine months and all that. What yeah. you need is a, is a proper foundation. Yeah. So what we're trying to integrate and what we're trying to develop is a, is a combination of the right aircraft and the right training philosophy. We're focusing on the crew resource management aspect, focusing on the safety aspect uh, of, of operations. Operation. So that's what we're in the development with. It's just letting a little secret out. But uh, yeah, we're in, the, we're in the final stages of establishing. Yeah, there's a, some great stuff upcoming in the future. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So Seth, thanks for, for coming on board. My pleasure. Hope we answer some of those questions, but obviously there'll be a lot more questions, guys. This. This uh, series is dedicated to exactly that. Whatever you want to know now about how we operate the aircraft, how we manage the flight, how we manage the flight planning, how we manage the engine systems, um, stick with us, let us know, and we'll, we'll update you. The last seven minutes of this uh, video is dedicated to the actual flight that you've seen in the trailer. Yeah. <laughs> seven minutes of flying overhead Vonnebaum Airport with a low pass, slightly out of position, um, but nonetheless, we did the pass and we went on the way out uh, back home. So any questions, you know the drill. Yeah, guys, stay tuned for the seven-minute uh, footage. It's uh, promising some live action. And uh, don't forget to follow their fly guys 787 That's right, guys, the standard operating procedures. Yeah. Like, share, subscribe, comment. We'll see you soon. Keep the blue side up. Uniform Bravo Sierra, line up on it, run it tonight. Line up tonight, I'll to you, Bravo Sierra. Papa X-ray Lima, ready to cross 2-9. Papa X-ray Lima, get to cross 2-9, report outbound. Uh, routine via the uh, petrol port, uh, report GF number 2 outbound. Look out for a Robinson 2-2 two, two operating north of the airfield. Crossing 2-9, uh, except that uh, petrol port. And we'll go to GF 124-4. Next, Papa X-ray Lima. Major to cross the exceeded from Alpha Delta. GF2. Now, break break Alpha 2, uniform Bravo Sierra. Runway 29, you are cleared to uh, take off operations to the south of the Air Force and report they are ready to join the downwind for landing. Runway 29, 
Uh, copy that. We are requesting, obviously, runway heading, uh, joining left downwind uh, 2 niner, and then fly past along runway 26 Delta, outbound for Roslyn. Alpha 2 Uniform, Bravo Sierra. Copy and report on the upwind of 2 nine. Details complete to routine to Roslyn. Copy that. We'll call you upwind 2 niner uh, in outbound Roslyn. And uh, confirm clear takeoff. Carry November Alpha, tell us ready in turn. November Alpha, tell copy the hold position. We'll stand by. And Alpha 2 Uniform, Bravo Sierra, rolling runway 2 nine. Confirm. Alpha 2 Uniform Bravo Sierra. Alpha 2 Uniform Bravo Sierra, you're dead for takeoff. Rolling 2 9 Alpha 2 Uniform Bravo Sierra. Alpha Fox Top Puffers, your boundary out, uh, 6,000. Alright, temperature of pleasure is good, fuel's Fox good. Fox Broadcast 125, decimal 4. 154, thanks, Bravo. Let me tell you that we need to cross, or we remain to the south of um, the runway, let me tell you that. Engine Chile, speed. Chile, Chile. Copy, just hold to the north end. Um, Current moment, the traffic now airport will be displaying via the uh, taxiway delta. Stand by for the crossing. We'll remain to the north, stand by the crossing, and remain to the north. Uh, Master information. Master information, uh, copy the traffic now airport displaying, and uh, just stand by for the departure number two behind traffic at the holding point. I'm um, sorry, I think we are the same traffic, uh, Master information. November Alpha Hotel is having point 2-9 ready to Engine, go. Speed. Remember Alpha Hotel, Engine, for the speed. Departure. Remember Alpha Hotel, Engine, speed. Remember Alpha Hotel, are you ready for immediate on 2-9? I need to route you north of Roslyn outbound. Ready for immediate now? Ready for immediate now and we'll report north of Roslyn. Remember Alpha Terra on a 2 and clear immediate takeoff, make it a right turn reporting north of Rosina Abbott. November Alpha Tower will make right turn then turn and call you at Rosina. One of them tower, good day, Ramin Sera Papa. Ramin Sera Papa, good day, Tamba. Ramin Sera Papa, go ahead. 44, sir, from uh, the apron, I request your start and lift for flight um, to Santon. Cheese. Mr. Sarah Papa, stand by to Jeez. lift in the next uh, five minutes to uh, hold your position on the ground. Jeez. Thank you, we'll start up and we'll be ready to lift uh, as soon as you can accommodate, Mr. Sarah Papa. Mr. Sarah Papa. One of them, India Micromia. India Micromia, right? Um, I've had Even a problem altitude. with the brakes, I need to taxi back to the, the airport. Cheese. India Micromia, copy it, are you able to make 180 on the Jeez. I'll make it 180 now. Yeah, Bravo, copy to 181. Bravo, contact ground on 2 0 to Smart 6. Uh, continue with the uh, fly past. Mustang formation line up in April runway 29 and that traffic for K2 on Bravo reaching back to the April. What's the traffic sir? And secure them and then uh, line up for the right standing by the departure. Cheese. Cheese. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, cross runway uh, two nine now cross zero six report safe uh, the power flight. Let's cross two nine request an authorization please to the south of Bravo. Let's see for the authorization now. Thank you, sir. Can we continue with low level emergencies? Low level emergencies, they are approved remaining to the south, not above 50 feet. Can we continue to elevate 2, please? Just for south landing. Elevate number 2 approved. Thank you, sir. Let me tell you to get. Number 2, you know, from over here is uh, runway heading. Huh? 